Hello there, many people ask about support for the launch key series Mark III, so the new four keyboards you can get, the 25 keys, 49, 37 and 61 key versions. And yeah, I did it. So let's have a look at what's possible with this device. For an entry level keyboard, it's actually quite powerful. You have a fully programmable display in here. You have different controls, arpeggiator, all that stuff is in here. The fader section is only available on the larger model, so only on a 49 and 61 model features, not on a smaller 25 and 37 versions. But nevertheless, those stuff which is possible with these faders is also possible here in this section with the pads and the knobs, so you get the same functionality. But it's easier with that one because you can have different modes active at the same time. So what is possible? So you can play normally uh, the, the keyboard, you have pitch band, you have a modulation wheel and you have also hardware support for the arpeggiator. So the arpeggiator you get in the hardware can be used with Bitwig as well. The only thing you need to do to support this is also to send out a MIDI control click. You do that here in the synchronization settings. So here if you see the launch key Mark III, you just enable clock and then also the arpeggiator follows the tempo. So enable arpeggiator here. Let's change the tempo. So you see you can use that as well and uh, you can also use all those features to change the resolution octaves which are available here in the hardware. You can also use that uh, with this arpeggiator. Same is for scale. Also scale can apply to you to the keyboard as well and also octave transposition is working as well here uh, with the device. Also the fixed chord function where you can program a chord is also available here for the keyboard and that one is a bit different. That one enables a browser so yeah. since we have a pretty boring sound let's just start with the browser and the browser brings up here uh, this is just the control of keyboard keys so these are the keyboard keys which send cursor commands and this is the return command and I combined this with a browser mode which which works actually pretty nice for the Bitwig browser because the Bitwig browser can be really nicely controlled with cursor keys. So if you now use just the cursor keys here, you can navigate through your patches and you can also, if you go left, go through uh, the different filter types. So you can also filter, for example, uh, we already have that here. Uh, our favorites up here, or we want to have only audio effects, instruments, and that stuff. You can use also these ones to go through the, through the different tabs. So you can select devices, presets, multi samples, and so on. To confirm the browser, you can use the green one. And if you want to discard the selection, you can use the red button. Also, if you press that button again, you also discard your selection. Or you can also use the return button, which also confirms it. There is a little squirk here. If you use now the confirmation to select this sound, this one stays lit. Um, yeah, that's a little problem here. But if you use Drift, for example, it's also a gun again. So we have now a little bit more interesting sound in here. And uh, you have now these sections in the device. You have this part here with the knobs and the pads and you have here your faders and you have the transport. So let's start with simple stuff. We can have transport here, so playback start playback stop. Um, there are some hidden features here as well. You can double click the play button to go to the beginning and you can double tap the stop button to go to the end. So there's not much in there but this goes to the end of the project if it's pretty helpful if it's a longer project. You can start recording. Um, there are also different combination keys and you can also configure in the settings what function you like to have here if you prefer clip recording or the arranger recording. That's all in the settings. Toggle here the playback. That's interesting. This makes this new command so creates a new clip and you can directly record in that clip. Um, maybe let's put in that one. Okay. 
the new hit is coming into shape. I feel it coming. <laughs> you can undo it as well. Let's stop that. You can undo it as well. And if you use it with shift, you can redo the undone command as well. So, so much for the transport section. Having a look here, there's lots of features in there. You have two different modes. You can select the modes for the knobs and you can select modes for the pads. So starting on top of the knobs, these modes are written down here. So it's device mode, volume on mode, panorama mode, two sense modes. And so you can have only two cents with the device for controlling. And you have four costume modes, which are uh, configurable with the Innovation Components app. And they send MIDI to Bitwig so you can configure that for what, whatever floats your boat there. To select the mode, press Shift so you can currently you uh, we are in panorama mode. Um, there's this little funny thing that you cannot have the same mode on both. I don't know why it's a decision of innovation. It's like that. So you cannot have volume mode on both uh, these uh, areas. So that's why the volume mode is in this brownish red. So you see currently panorama is active and uh, I control here panorama with that. Also on the display you get the panorama notification and you see the current uh, selected track and if that goes away you also see what is the range of tracks you're currently editing so we are here in number one to five because there are only five if you have more than eight then you see for example you're in the range one to eight or nine to sixteen and so on and below that there is always the currently selected track. So this is panorama control and you can also change that to send. So this would now control the first send for that one maybe. Where are we? Let's go. Uh, so track changes always the track. So let's go here to the drum. And then let's add here some delay. So this controls the first effect uh, send for uh, all the eight uh, tracks. Same is here for the second one, but we don't have a second one in here. So this shows us with a little bit of changed color. And then you have here the volume mode. Uh, let's go to here. So then you can also select here the volume mode and can then also change here volume for all of your tracks crank that up a bit. And we have the device mode. Let's maybe go back to the Polysynt here above Lily. This is a polysynt. No, mm. uh, it doesn't matter. Um, so let's go to device. So with device, you can now also change here the parameters. So change the cutoff, resonance, and all these uh, things uh, like you used to. And editing device uh, needs some support because if you have more than one device. Let's maybe just add here a device. Let's say we want to have, ah, wrong. Uh, that's what I've got. So if you use a browser, if you just press it, it executes the browser for the currently selected device. And if you want to add a new one after that, you use shift and the browser button. So then you can add another one. And then we can say whatever, let's add a chorus to that. Okay. And uh, now how can you select and switch between the devices? That's what the device select button up here is for. And if you press that, you get this view where you can here uh, switch devices. So that one selects now the polygrid. This selects the chorus. And uh, in the middle section, you can select the pages. So on the polysynth, you see you have more pages than on the chorus, and you can directly select these pages. And you will see in the display as well the name of what we are editing. And we are here on the perform page. Um, there's also another button. So here with the green one, you can toggle the device on and off. Um, and there's also, if we're talking here about uh, devices, the other one, device lock, toggles the setting of the um, device pinning, which means if you pin the device, it will stay uh, on the knobs for that device. If you're in device mode, no matter what is selected in Bitwig or if you change a track, it will be pinned for editing this device, which is pretty helpful. And also, if you use shift with device lock, you can toggle uh, the window of the currently selected device. So much for the devices. Then there are uh, those four costume modes. So they totally depend on what you edited in the components uh, app. And with that one, you can map whatever button. For example, you can say here, uh, I want to map 
to control our key and then you move the button and then for this project you have this specific setting for the, the cutoff to control that one. Uh, since these are fixed modes which I cannot change in any way because they are controlled by you, uh, you will also not see here names or anything. It's just CC data which we can map and that's the way it is with this model. Um, okay, so that's so much for the pot modes. Um, if you just talked about these modes, these modes are pretty identical here. So faders uh, have the same modes. They are selected here. You don't have a panorama mode, but you have the device mode, volume and the two cents as well. And for costume made modes for faders as well. And um, something specific here is that you use that row of buttons for selecting your track. So if you don't have that, you use the track. But if you have that, you can directly jump between your uh, eight tracks here and you can also toggle for record uh, arming uh, in here as well so second row contains modes for the pads so the mode you normally have active is a session one in the session mode you can go up and down here and you see here in bitwig what you are controlling which ones you can start uh, the clips you can start the scenes as well this starts the first scene, this starts the second scene. So nothing too surprising in here. What is a hidden feature here is if you press that one. So you have different modes in here. You can uh, have record enabled. So if you don't have this area, you can have it here. There you can have track selection. Then you have muting, soloing and stopping of track clips. So that's basically about it. There is also a sequencer. This is the first mode. So the second mode is the drum mode. And here you have a little drum sequencer. So let's go here to the drum track. So, and in the drum mode, uh, you can play the drums, uh, not very surprisingly. You see also the color you have here in your drum machine. If you use a drum machine from Bitwig, so let's create a new clip here for that as well. Session mode, let's run the other clip. So back to the drum. So and with the scene one button, you can toggle between uh, playing the drums or selecting the last selected drum. I will direct the recording here and you can edit those uh, the last selected ones so let's switch off here the overdub feature and then you can here edit as well select here the bass drum And there is also another feature here. If you press that button, you can change the pages. So currently we have here, um, you can select here page one and here go to select two if the clips, uh, if the steps do not fit on one page here. So you can navigate to that as well. And in the upper part, you can select the, select the resolution. So here you could change for triplets, for example. So what we had currently is 16, but you can also go to 32s. So let's stop that. What else do we have? Um, so the rest is uh, hardware features as well, or for custom mode. So that one is scale chords, which is a hardware feature. And uh, is you, okay, wrong sound for that. Let's go here to atmosphere. <laughs> so let's maybe get whatever nice Selena patch you can also close that with that yeah that's good and uh, you can play those 
So chords for that. Next one is the user chords. So that's pretty nice. Here you can store your own chords. And it works like that. You press just the pad you want to assign. And let's say, let's play the chord. You see the chord here and it's set. And these can be used for recording then as well. And then we have four costume modes. Uh, for example, here's something to play. A different drum arrangement. What is that? Uh, some CC toggle switches, which you could also learn to to buttons in Bitwig. And finally, some program changes. So if you have a VST plugin, which reacts to program changes, maybe we can have here a synth one, which reacts to program changes. So here you see, this is uh, pretty handy. for such a kind of device. So, um, a little rundown here on a device. Uh, pretty powerful, I think, what you can do with it. And if you like it, dig it, make some funky music.